I think the most interesting thing coming out of the 2022 Silverstone F Formula 1 GP is Lennon Norris McLaren pedal camera. For sim racing it is especially interesting because it shows the pedal work of a Formula 1 driver coming from one of the best drivers currently in the game. It is quite interesting to see their approach to lift, trail braking and braking overall. Though braking is where this topic is going, mainly on brake travel compared to sim racing. If you ever seen an onboard video of a race car, you'll see that the brake travel is fairly big, in some cases not too different from a throttle pedal. Even in Lando's car, the brake travel is quite large and this flies in the face of some pedals that I've tried, owned and reviewed in the past. Sim racing of course can't be one to one with real racing, it can try, it does try to get close, sometimes really close. But here's the thing, why then the approach in racing of having travel in a brake pedal to then having some say that race cars have very minimal travel, maybe one to two centimeters in total? Well, I'm going to throw a lot of wild ones out there and I will definitely miss the mark completely in some, if not all of the cases. This video of course will be a simplification of certain topics, but go on the comments and say how wrong my assessment of the topic is. First of all, in the car there's the mechanical aspect of braking, which includes the pedal, of course, you have to press something, then you have the fluid, the pump, a brake booster in some cases, the pads, the disc, the brake lines, and so on. In sim racing we have electrical signal that comes from a pedal input, either that be from movement in the cases of hall sensors or potentiometers, they can also be load sensing like in the case of load cell pedals or reading hydraulic pressure for hydraulic pedals. There's really not a physical object being moved at the other side of the brake circuit. I believe this difference to be extremely important and uh, where a lot of confusion starts to arise from. It is true that race cars have a far heavier brake pedal to reach full activation than a regular road car. In your daily drive you want something that is easily activated, you don't want something that requires a high level of fitness to use continuously. So the brake pedals in road cars are essentially very soft, not just in the case of the pedal movement parts, but soft in a sense to fully engage them to the point where the ABS is working its pants off, it doesn't really require that much force. A race car of course will have different prerequisites for braking, the car has a much higher top speed and will be changing those top speeds and those speeds far more dramatically and far more often than a regular car, therefore all components will have a stronger and different feel as well there is something called the g-force assist when you're braking in a race car. For example when the car is rapidly decelerating those g-forces coming from the braking will be also transferred to the legs that will exercise that braking. The questions from a sim racing perspective are always the same I guess, are race car brakes really that hard, do they lack movement and it is my opinion that the idea we have of a race car might be a little tainted with the mechanical realities of sim racing equipment and of course especially the marketing teams behind them. In sim racing we are limited to components, to rubbers, to elastomers, to springs, foams, maybe sometimes there's a hydraulic aspect to the pedals. What all of these parts are essentially doing is trickery to emulate a brake system that has fluid, pumps with mechanical parts. Even when an hydraulic system is added to sim racing, it's really not quite the same, though it closes the gap. Now for the meat and potatoes, watching the videos of pedal cams in real racing cars, it seems like the brake pedal is a mix of whatever the braking system is installed and what the driver wants to feel, as long, of course, as the braking system allows it to. We have real examples here. Look at the aforementioned Lando Norris video. At the end of Veil, vale, there seems to be quite a lot of brake travel for a car of this type and also look at that smooth trail brake work. Another example coming from F1, we have Pedro Garciosa Alfa Tauri's test at Misano. Do you see any brake movement at all? It's very little, right? Of course, there is a case of camera placement, camera lens, in session objectives and weather and all of this will have a different impact on the force and movement of the pedal. But the difference here seems to be quite huge. Also, you have to remember formula cars have very little space in the footwell, still you were able to see a lot of movement from uh, Lando but not from Gasly. That probably means that Gasly would like a stiffer pedal. But since we are in sim racing world and everybody in sim racing world uses GT3 cars, let's have a look at the GT3 car, in this case the GTR GT3 Nismo and it's done at Barcelona T1. Look at that brake pedal movement can basically park a bus in there, it's really long. But then how about the Super V8? 
Well, there's plenty of that movement too. So it kind of seems that race cars can and do have a long brake movement. Though at the end of the movement, in order to stop those rotors in a car that is going at high speed, it's going to be hard. It is often stated that in order to activate fully a brake pedal, you require like 80, 90, over 100 kilos of force. But that's not the movement part. That's basically when you reach the end of the movement and you are engaging the pads with the rotors. The movement can come from, from what I able to understand, from multiple places in the system, mainly the mechanical advantage in the geometry of the brake pedal. So that means the longer the brake pedal, it will have a higher mechanical advantage. And then also can come from a selection of master cylinders. For example, there is this choice quote from Master Power Brakes. Increasing master cylinder bore size will decrease your pedal effort and increase your pedal travel. Conversely, a larger bore in your car's master cylinder will, all other components being consistent, increase your pedal effort and decrease your pedal travel. In iRacing, for example, there's a selection of master cylinders in certain cars that will change the sensitivity of the brake. Of course, iRacing cannot emulate brake travel or effort, but regardless, at the end of that movement, there will be a hard place that will require significant force to fully utilize. The pads will contact the rotors, the hydraulic fluid will not compress, and therefore there will be a stone wall there as long as there aren't any leaks or air inside. In sim racing though, we do not have master cylinders connected to our pedals, we do not have a brake system that at the end of the day will be activating calipers on rotors. There are at most hydraulic sets with very small systems that at the end of the day will read a value and give out an electrical signal to be processed by your game. Likewise, we do not have a physical feedback system from the brake pedal stating where the rotors are more or less engaging. We do not have those g-forces stating how much we are de-accelerating. Therefore, pedal makers need to provide solutions with all of these limitations in mind and provide systems that at the very most bridge the gap between what we can have in reality and what it is in a car. The most popular choice nowadays are elastomers. You can have a mix between elastomers that can even try to replicate that hard bump stop feel while still giving a reasonable pedal travel. If you don't want any, you can have none at all. So these are my possibly wrong answers to the questions. Do race cars have large brake travels? Well, depending on the circumstance, yes. They seem to be very common and oftentimes even larger than sim racing pedals. Are race pedals art? Yes, they are. Why then do sim racing pedals have such a short pedal travel? Well, that's because of physical limitations, marketing, and of course, sim racers choices. But honestly, being real here, don't listen to it must be short. Choose based on what you want, based on your objectives, on the equipment you have, where you're gonna mount the pedals. Well, I think this does at least cover the topic somewhat. Let me know in the comments your opinions and how am I wrong?